Let's talk about how to properly remove a front wheel from a bike that has disc brakes, but also uses what we'll call a standard quick release or a modern version of a standard quick release that works a little bit differently and doesn't have a nut, which will be on this bike. First of all, when we're working with disc brakes, we no longer have calipers or brake calipers that we have to open up to drop the bike wheel out of the frame. So that makes it a little bit easier. But we do have some other things we want to pay attention with disc brakes. And particularly, when the front wheel is out, especially on hydraulic disc brakes, the rotor will be out of the brake caliper. Okay? If we look at this one, we might see it just a little bit better. As we come around here, we have the brake caliper. When the wheel comes out, the rotor no longer passes through the brake caliper. The problem with that is, if we bump into the brake lever, we'll advance the pistons or the brake pads, and they may come out far enough that it will make it difficult or impossible to get the front wheel back in. So we want to, first of all, when we have the front wheel out with disc brakes, avoid pushing the lever. But if we bump into it by mistake, which happens, especially putting a bike in and out of a car, we want to put something in between a spacer of such, in between the caliper brake pads. I have an orange spacer which we're going to use today. If you don't have a spacer, you can always use something like corrugated cardboard. Just make sure it's thick enough so that it doesn't fall out. So how, let's work with these. So for starters, let me come around this direction. We're going to start with this one. So this is a disc brake. It has a standard quick release. Notice that the lever is on the opposite side of the rotor. So we want to make sure the lever is not on the rotor side. We're going to open this up just like we would a normal quick release lever. Again, the bike won't, the wheel won't come out because there are safety tabs in the end of the fork. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen, keeping the bike vertical, loosen the nut side far enough so that the wheel can then be removed. Oop, a little bit farther, loosening it some more, and now the wheel comes out. Now. This is the point where we want to put our spacer into our caliper. See if we can do see this. So, caliper here. We're going to take our spacer. We're going to slide it into between the two pads. And there's a little snap at the end of the spacer. That's going to snap through either a screw or a cotter pin on the opposite side. We're going to slide this through. Push that through to it snaps in place. Now that will stay in place. Now if we were to bump into our lever, we don't have to worry about advancing the pads. Now we can now take our bike and then we can place it into the back of our car or however we're transporting it. To put the wheel back in, we're going to simply remove our spacer. Then we're going to take our wheel. We're going to line it up again. This time we have to line up the brake helper with the rotor. We're going to drop the fork right onto the front axle. And then here, let's see if I can do this so you can see with the camera. We're going to tighten up the nut, so I'm going to hold this lever, tighten up the nut. Right now it's free for 180 degrees. We're going to tighten until we have resistance at the halfway point. Keep tightening. Still a little loose. Keep tightening. Just a little bit more. And now we have resistance at the halfway point. And then what we're going to do is we're going to close that lever, making sure when we close it that we're not hitting the fork. That's closed all the way. And then you can spin the wheel to make sure it's not rubbing. If it's rubbing, hold the bike nice and vertical, open that lever, and then close it again. That should center it. Now let's take a look at this one. Same idea, except there's no nut. This looks like a nut, but it's fastened to the fork. In this case, we're simply just going to open the lever. No nut to loosen, so we're just going to spin this lever. This will actually come completely out once we're all the way loose. Just a little bit further. There it goes. This will come completely out. There's going to be a spring. It's a little conical spring. The standing quickly has had these as well. This one just has one. It's smaller diameter points closer to the frame or the bike, the larger diameter is towards the outside. Going to put that down, the wheel just pops out. Again, we can use our spacer to put in here so that we don't hit the brake lever. And then when we put the wheel back in, we're simply going to line this back up again with the caliper. 
And now in this case, we're going to take our lever or skewer, slide it through, and it's going to start the thread. We're going to rotate this. Again, this rotates this lever 180 degrees. We're going to keep tightening it until we have a point where it's tight. We have resistance at the halfway point. Right about there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to close that off and make sure that that is not again hitting the fork. It can be in any orientation. We just don't want it to hit the fork. And again, the wheels should spin freely. And that's working with disc brakes with a standard quick release or sort of a newer modified version of a standard quick release.